I'm what you would call a lazy son of a gun. There is only a few things in this world that would appeal to me. And the effort itself would pursue one of these passions is not part of several things. So because I don't have the willing to go out frolic like a fool, had a lot of field tulips and daisies. To be honest, I haven't done anything outdoor related in years. I sit right in front of my TV. There's nothing new or fancy, but at most gore generous, I guess. It would probably be a 12 inches and the upside was a flat screen. I had a satellite TV, which was also another thumbs up, I guess. Sitting on your ass in front of the idiot box who would, won't get you any success, but it won't better your social life. And it sure as hell won't get you into what you want. But it has me shown many awful things that you will be able to keep with me. I will always remember this program in particular that had me got out of my seat, going through my neighborhood looking for a key to my own safety. It's all because of these programs I hate, which is informationals. I hate nothing more than seeing paid programming. Instead of the actual title, no info or story, it was just some host selling America its next useless gadget. What made this so informational is much more different than all the others, not as such that they would get the way of advertising, but it's just how they were advertising it. It was roughly 15 minutes long, and it was aired at late at night, like how most informationals are. More and more hours pass and questions pops into my head. Recently I asked myself how did it become an air without a struggle during up the storm. Just a few moments ago I asked who I put up for that cable company to air. And how did it even air on TV? My mind could never say at rest, I swear. I was rough, it was roughly a month ago when I was up late and humid summer night. I believe it was around 3am and it was storming out. Since I was sitting on my gradually flattening ass in front of the idiot box, I decided to get a little annoyed with the searching for a signal. The message played a prolonged period of time. When it came and did disappear, it temporarily and sometimes would play as such a digital glitch for whatever was playing at the moment. Then right back into searching for the goddamn signal. I grew up with the s uh, silence of the television and wanted to hear cars crashing of those caught on tape shows. The in the corner screams of the audience at a pro wrestling event, or at least the laugh of Spongebob and Patrick. I picked up the remote and hidden the nooks and crannies and slowly aging and breaking the recliner I was sitting in. I hit the guide button to see what was playing on the other channels and normally I watched. Most of the titles were programs that were gone because of the storm. The satellite was still trying to collect data. As I was annoyed and about fed up with the cable, I was going to turn it off and go back to bed. But after scrolling up one more page, I saw the next program in the box. Alright, I thought to myself. That alright quickly turned it to... For Pete's sake. That program I thought was gonna be titled Paid Programming. I honored myself and most of the other channels that were watched were still glitching and gathering data. I'd rather try and watch something that I didn't like without much of the glitches. Than the best show ever and miss the greatest parts because of the glitches. Rolling my eyes, I highlighted the box and words paid programming to see more info of the channel, which sparked up some questions at oddness. For the info paid programming, it wasn't as the usual info for informationals, which is our usual title itself again, and the info said supplies are running out. Not only did the words create an odd and curious atmosphere, but they also gave me a feeling of deja, deja vu. That feeling when you get before experience at some point. I thought that I couldn't be sure of anything at the moment. My mind was that went to the channel after it was trying to figure out the info, but failing. The channel's name was a number I have not seen before. The channel number was 73, which I don't ever remember ordering or even watching. What was even odder was the name was Ask Why. Why does that even channel stand for? Am I only seeing this now? More questions as if I need to be get more comprehended. Eventually, the thinking grew tiresome, and I didn't want to think. Just try a, try a few brain cells and staring at some host, making a fool of himself by making cash off some stupid product that most people probably wouldn't even need or use. The program was only 15 minutes long, and it was scheduled to air at 3.15am and end at 3.30am. 
not having any matter of choices. I highlighted the block and pressed select on the remote. Static. That was all there was. All he was invisible was static. What really little hopes of helping something I had dropped like a dumb nit bell. But wait. Static? Satellite TV does not show static when the receiver is on. It only shows a searching for signal message on a black screen. But why was there static? This went on for two minutes and then I just sat there gazing into it. I hoped my mind would entertain and show me a face on the screen just to mess with me. I was getting so desperate so when I was about to turn off the TV and call it a night, the loud noise stopped and a sound was very faintly remembered played in my head. Like how I, it was from somewhere more deja vu stuff think about and I thought it was fried your brain from watching this garbage. I focused my attention back at the TV and it appeared to be a bog or a swamp of some sort. Bullfrogs booming their voices could be heard, dragonflies could be seen as well as lily pads, dirty muddy water. I took notice of this scenery because it seemed to be a sacred place in my mind. I paid no attention to the numbers of the voices of the background in the, of the shot. It was around 3.18 and when an Indonesian man stepped out of the camera, finally something was going to happen only to be bullcrapped on again for another minute. He was talking to someone outside of the shot, and seeing as how the camera shook a little bit during the response to the man in the front of the camera, I figured it was the cameraman speaking with him, and the man of the camera then turned away from the screen, and to his right, left from my perspective, yelled at something. The yell was at full of rage. It was as if someone was hostile or violent. Maybe a threat? At 3.25, and the Indonesian man spoke with a heavy accent. So heavy that most people wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Well, I don't know how, but I was quite able to get a dosper of what this man was trying to say. He started, Good evening. We have yet again our high-quality product available for sale. Stay tuned to watch us perform free tests to show how the top quality it is. What are they selling? The host made a motion that with his hand and says, Come here. It was gestured to the left, the right screen of my perspective. At 3.20, a large alligator appeared that had jagged and threw rough-looking skin. Its teeth looked as if they were been sharped with a hard mineral. It was something that came out of a horror movie. It wasn't creepy, though, because of deja vu moments. I felt that this could be very well part of them as well. At 3.21, the host said, Okay, first, we will test the quality of this creature's skin. His hand then reached up above the camera, and he was handed something. Bringing it back to the view, we saw it was a sharp serrated blade. With absolutely no expression of fear whatsoever, the host casually walked up to the gator like if it was a domestic pet, and my heart dropped as I saw the skin of the gator. Very oddly and predictably, the alligator did nothing at all. He just laid down, looking, tooking like if this cutting was a normal thing. The host finished up and at 3.23 and said, See? Not one scratch on the left of the skin. He was telling the truth, but not when the scratch was found. I was almost impressed by it. I kind of wanted to see uh, how it would cut it. If we seemed that we were running out of time. We shall begin the two tests of the same thing using the same subject, he said. Then he said with a smile, We shall test the cutting ability of the teeth and then the power of the jaw. He backed away from the camera and looked to his right as he screamed. He made a quick and violent gesture of what was and where was he at. Screaming could be heard off screen, and the host got fed up and walked towards the source of the screen. At 3.25, the host walked back with the shot of the, of, to the shot with the same over the shoulder, fighting him to get them let down. It appeared to be a teenage girl. She had jeans on them, which must be dirty from mud. With a long sleeve shirt, and she wasn't from anywhere from informational for was being fi filmed. She had no accent. In fact, she sounded American. Well, what that could have been a shock for me. This simply the expression of the indefinite, a poker face of some sorts. The host was having trouble controlling the girl and gestured the help of the cameraman. The view shook uh, once, and the fat man wearing a dirted shirt with kanaki shorts was now on view. The cameraman then picked up the girl's head by the hair and then hit her in the face with a hard haymaker. Now, of course, the sound of the blow was impressive. It was basically enough to control her to settle down. For a moment, it made it easier for the host and the cameraman to grab her by the wrist and ankles and toss her to the left where the gator was. 
And then that's when my heart dropped for a bit. The gator wasted little time. As soon as the girl landed with the FUD, the alligator bit her and consumed her. her. She had let out a wail and painful gear from a normal person. And with that was heavy grasping and sobbing. None other than the noise lasted long, as the alligator their bitter more and consumed most of it. Her screams and sobs turned to gurgling. Blood, I thought. The alligator let go and then dug into everything else like it did, like if it was a feast before death. It then went from the neck to the head, before consuming it all. The cracking and crushing sound made me flinch a little. From there, it went to the torso, legs, and so on. At 325, there was no longer a corpse of the gator to tear. Body pieces were all over the swampy floor. Even the nearby water had a faint red tint to it. The camera then went back to the host, who said nothing, and he just stared it into the camera. He stared at the TV, and he, or he stared at me. The stare is what sent chills down my spine. It was like he was watching me. He was waiting for me to move or say something. And when I did move, his eyes followed, and this continued till 3.29, when he said, Order it soon, because we're running low on supplies. Even though while saying that, his soul piercing stare in his eyes, the channel went to static, and the information was over. All of that night was over for me, but it stuck me the most was the stare. From then on, I couldn't sleep as well as I used to. I closed my eyes and saw this, and when my eyes were open, I saw his entire face that was happening so often. I considered it to be learning how to live with it. Eventually, I saw him on television again. His entire face with the stare would always be on for five minutes, and then it would cut together to a regular uh, programming. I grew fed up with it, and I didn't want to see his face anymore. I ended up tossing out the satellite receiver and started reading to forget about him. However, the small sewers of the deepest system thought I just had to go back over to those questions. I had to ask why was I so sick of seeing this host's face. I had to look over through my thoughts to make sure that they weren't fired by fried from that idiot's box. Now, what did I not do? I did not want to see him because the stare on the screen. I despise it so much. Or was it because it gave me that, that stare the past week and said, We're low on supplies, so help me with this girl, uh, or our restock will be instant. It creeps me out of what he just threatened. It creeps me out even more than the thought of being watched through the television screen. And that, my little pretties, was Alligator Girl on Channel Ask Why. A, um, I guess you could say a channel, um, a TV creepypasta or something. This story was written by Ranks Grown. Um, my final thoughts on the story. This was actually a pretty interesting creepypasta. Like, I gotta be honest, this story was actually really good. I really do like how this story went out. It was absolutely very well made in detail. But it's also kind of messed up too. And if you're wondering why, I would just kind of, you know, explain it. But first of all, I would like to say I first heard of this story, you know, because on some channels. Because there's a couple channels on, well, YouTube that sat there and um, narrated. Like, there was a, there's a couple of narrations on this channel well, not this channel, but like on YouTube that did narrate that. There is a couple narrations on it. I really have to say that this story was actually quite freaky, to be honest, when I saw and read the story. Like, seeing that on TV, I honestly would have to say that's very messed up. Especially when the how the whole commercial went out. It's just really messed up. Like, I'm saying that it's messed up because of the contents that was in it. It's just... Oh my goodness, like I can understand, see this believable, but I could really say that it's also fake as well. So I can definitely say hey, that now, that this story, I obviously have to say that this story actually had a really good feel of scare factor. Now this was obviously written before creepypastas became cliched. Like I'm not saying every single one is cliched, but you know. I think this story was written, I guess, 2013, maybe 2014, I'm not really sure. But I really have to say that this story was actually really well made in detail. Like, this story, I really have to say that, that it was really creeped me out. Like, at first it was kind of weird, 
And I probably didn't understand what was actually happening, but when I read more of the story, it just went out really well made in detail. Like, the beginning was a bit drawn out. I kind of noticed that it might have been a bit drawn out. But it's still a pretty good movie for what this one is. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, this story, I really would sit there and do this. It was a pretty messed up creepypasta. Like, it's not a bad one. I'm just saying it's a pretty interesting one. Like, I actually seen, you know, some creepypastas who went out of their way and did something like this. This obviously really was... It was just really... In really believable. Like, I really have to say that this one actually provided pretty good detail when it had a very good explanation as to what this is. I really have to say that this story, I obviously really do fi find this to be believable, but not only that, it's messed up at the same time. Like, it's really messed up when, you know, the whole description of, you know, what happens or something like that. I could definitely say that now. It's a pretty good, pretty good, good concept of how this went out. I could definitely say we can do that this story actually had a pretty good detail. And it was interesting, interesting, you know, sitting there and, you know, seeing, you know, the detailing of the person putting in this story. It's just, wow, really well done. Yeah, like the only problem, it's not a major one, but... It kind of, the beginning was kind of drawn out just a little bit, but then the rest of the story became interesting and well made. But also, there were parts of it that I didn't really understand what was going on, but eventually I did find out when I read more of the story. So, those are not major negatives, they're just a little bit um, a minor issues I would have to, you know, kind of point out. They're not bad or anything, just thought I would point out. But I also want to say that there's another thing I could definitely say that I loved about this story. Now, one thing I definitely like is that how the creepypasta went out. The story went out very well. The grammar actually went pretty good. I really do like how the concept of it was pretty well done. Especially with the whole story, you know, being, you know, this, like, messed up. I definitely have to say I've seen some other messed up stories that have gone down this path. So, there's definitely that. Okay. I guess that's probably just all I have to say. I have to say the grammar is pretty good in this story. I love how the grammar went out. It was really well made in detail. Same with the sentence structuring. The paragraph structure was good. Everything about it was flat out amazing. But with all due sincerity, that's just basically what I have to say about this story. It's good. Not gonna lie. It's a pretty good story. It has a really good concept and everything going for it. So, I guess with that being the case, of that being said, um... What did you guys think about... Oh, yeah. my I'm going to sit there and just wrap up the review. As this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that is fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story would... I'm going to give this one a... What should I give this one? Oh, yeah. I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. Pretty good story. It was really good, well made. I really do like it. This story had a good going for. Flat out amazing. I, I really do appreciate the good, well, quality that was provided in the story. And the good quality of the writing of the story. So, I guess with that being the case and that being said, what did you guys think about this curry pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.